Let's talk about the horrible Jeep system, the auto stop, particularly the auto stop in conjunction with the auxiliary battery. You know, we had problems in my wife's Jeep Wrangler where I had eliminated, and I'll show you that in just a second, the auxiliary battery component. I didn't remove it from the Jeep, I just simply disconnected it. So how's it going? This is a bit of an update. And have there been any issues? First of all, let's, uh, let's pop the hood. We're gonna take a look, see if I can do this uh, one-handed. There we go. Gotta get the other side. And I have a little up pressure uh, on here because I do have the hood struts. So it just kinda goes up like so, right? Now, underneath the hood, I was having problems with the battery. When I would go, and this is how I think you kind of tell a little bit that you may have a problem, I would go to start the Jeep and it would kind of turn over and then it would die right away. So it was like a start and then died and then push the button again to start. I have push button start in here. And it would actually start up. Did that a lot and then right before I changed the battery out, it seemed to be getting even weaker. It would not turn over quite as strongly as it was. It was definitely not right. So I decided to go ahead and replace the main battery, primarily because it was about six years old. And these days it seems that batteries last, yeah, maybe about four, three to three to six years, something like that. So I went with this battery. It is a gel battery, by the way. I don't know that I've ever had one of these. So far it's been really strong. Now to eliminate the auxiliary battery, and I'll get to more specifics on that in a minute because it really is just to eliminate the auxiliary battery. You wanna disconnect this ground cable, and it was connected right here on the edge, and it kinda of has prongs that grabbed around this bracket here, so you kinda of have to pry it off a little bit, but it does come off. And then in the fuse box, I disconnected fuse number 42. Those were directions that I had found on the web to take the auxiliary battery out of the system and it did seem to work. The auxiliary battery is gone. Now, I haven't noticed any ill effects from not having it connected to the system anymore. Nothing does not work like it should. No lights. I will give you a little caveat to that though. Right after I did it, when I first disconnected the battery after the first start, I did have a, an air light, I can't remember what flavor it was, on the gauge cluster. Turned the Jeep off, turned it back on, that light went away and have never seen it again. And I didn't do anything else to get rid of it. Now, here's the little uh, exception, I guess. I thought that by getting rid of the auxiliary battery, I would be eliminating the auto stop function altogether. That is not true. All you're doing by doing what I just told you there a second ago is removing the auxiliary battery from the system. That's it. It just disconnects it out. The auto stop function still works. Now, some folks have had some concern about draining the main battery by doing that. Uh, the problem with the auxiliary battery is when it starts to not hold a charge anymore, it, it tries to continue to recharge itself by pulling juice from the main battery. That then drains the main battery and that's what will leave you stranded somewhere because that auxiliary battery will not charge up, it goes bad, pulls all the voltage, all of the power from the main battery and then you're stuck because you'll find yourself with a dead main battery. Now, what I'm hoping, and we'll find out over time, I've been watching the voltage readout on the display inside the Jeep, and fortunately it has that, it makes it easy, uh, for the main battery, just to see if it's holding voltage. In other words, to see whether or not it's draining. And so far, I haven't noticed anything. It's holding voltage where it should, nothing is pulling it down, and I don't see any problems with it. The only issue I can see that you could have by running the system this way is if you're using the auto stop, in other words, you didn't put any eliminator on it, which I'll mention or talk more about in a minute, 
or hitting the auto stop defeat button, you know, the button on the center console area, um, that you would sit at, say, a stoplight or something with the auto stop engaged and you're pulling power directly from the main battery as opposed to the auxiliary battery or without the auxiliary battery helping you out, if you will. I haven't experienced that yet, and I turn the system off every time I'm in this Jeep anyway. Now, I mentioned the Auto Stop Eliminator. There is uh, a company out there, and there are several different products, that sells a little wiring harness, I guess, that you plug in, it's plug and play, that eliminates the Auto Stop system by remembering what your last selection was with that button that you can push to turn it off. The way it works is you hit the button to turn it off and then the next time you start the Jeep, it remembers that off setting and it will keep the auto stop system deactivated or out of the loop, if you will. Now, if you want it to be back on again, you go ahead and hit the button and then the system will be as normal. Every time you turn the Jeep back on after that, it will remember that the auto stop system is functioning and on and it will be on. That's how it works. Like I said, it's a pretty simple uh, fix, I guess, and that it's right behind the dash area and it's plug and play. You're simply plugging this unit in between two wires and that's all you really have to do. Now, I may do that on this Jeep. I'm not sure because frankly, I don't really want the auto stop system kicking in under any circumstances, particularly since it's running off the main battery. Like if my wife or, I don't know, maybe we take it in for service and somebody else is in the driver's seat there that isn't aware of how I have it set up. Now, the good thing about how I have it set up is if you ever do need to go back in for service or whatever, maybe sell the Jeep, it's as simple as putting fuse number 42 right back in the fuse panel. And I have it taped on the lid underneath so I know. And then go ahead and reconnect. Actually, I would reconnect the ground wire first and then put fuse number 42 back in and you'll be golden. Everything will be as it was. Now, of course, we do have a second Jeep. Uh, this one is mine and it also has the auto stop system in it. And after looking under the hood, it seems to me to be set up the exact same way. In other words, it's got the extra negative ground here connected up. And then, of course, fuse 42 in the box. For me, I'm going to let this one run the way that it is now. And then when I start to develop problems, we'll see how long it takes. This Jeep took about five and a half, six years. This one, I'm not sure. It gets driven a lot more than this one does. So I suspect that I'll have problems with the auto stop system sooner. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys an update. So far, so good. No issues with the system the way I have it set up now. Um, we'll see going forward. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've done this yourself. I'd be curious to know if you've experienced anything weird as a result of taking the auxiliary battery out of the system. Leave a comment. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.